Hey guys, this is your digital anchor chart for standard 6EE7, which basically says that you can solve one step equations. Um, it says solve real world and mathematical problems by writing and solving equations of the form x plus p equals q and px equals q for cases in which p, q, and x are all non negative rational numbers. Um, your learning target, I can solve and write equations for real world mathematical problems containing one unknown value. Tyler, um, so I've got an example word problem here for each of these scenarios. The first one we're going to look at is an example of the PX equals Q. Um, it says Tyler wants to save $300 for a new stereo. He earns $37.50 for each lawn that he mows. How many lawns will he need to, uh, to mow to earn the $300? So we're going to set this up with a variable, with an unknown quantity, um, because I don't know how many lawns he needs to mow. I do know the answer to our equation needs to be 300. I want to raise $300. I know that I make $37.50, or he makes $37.50, for each lawn that he mows. So the quantity of lawns that needs to be mowed is going to be our X value. Um, so X equals number of lines, okay? So the way that we solve a problem like this, this is called a one-step equation, and we solve it using an inverse operation. So the operation that we have here currently is 3750 times X. It's a multiplication problem. We're gonna solve that using division. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to divide by 3750 on each side so that we isolate our variable and we're left with x equals base, basically the quotient of 300 divided by 3750. Now, um, to save a little time, 300 divided by 3750 is eight. Um, so the answer to this equation would be x equals eight. And we need to mow eight lawns. He needs to mow eight lawns to earn $300. All right. So basically, not that difficult. Um, and this is actually more difficult than a lot of the problems you're going to see. Many things that you're going to see are going to be like 2 times x equals 20. So you're going to know the answer in your head, um, not even realize that you're using the inverse operation, know that 2 times 10 equals 20, so X is going to equal 20. Uh, so a lot of these you're not going to have to think about, but it's important that you know what the steps are so that when you have big, nasty, ugly numbers, you do know what to do with them. Okay, so the second um, problem here is going to represent the other situation where we have addition or subtraction. Okay, so this one says face mass math average is 12 points higher than this time the first semester. She currently has an 81. What was her grade this time last semester? So we're going to let G equal her grade. Um, yeah, so let's see. Her math average is 12 points higher than this time first semester. She currently has an 81. What was her grade this time last semester? So we're going to let G equal grade. And it's actually going to be her grade last semester. Um, we know that she currently has an 81. And we know that whatever her grade is now, no, because she currently has an 81. We know that whatever her grade was last semester, G plus 12 points should give us the 81 points. Okay, let's read that again. Faith's math average is 12 points higher than this time the first semester. So the first semester grade plus 12 um, she currently has an 81, is 81. What was her grade this time last semester? So 
this in this case we have an addition problem and we're going to use the inverse operation of addition to solve it with the inverse operation of addition is subtraction so in order to isolate the variable in this case which is g we're going to subtract 12 from both sides of the equation and by doing so it will give us the value of g all right, so I'm going to cross these out because they're gone. That's nothing, right? 12 minus 12 is zero. That just leaves us with G. Equals 81 minus 12. Well, 81 minus 10 is 71. 71 minus 2 is 69. I would say, as her mother, 81 is much better than 69. So her, her current or her grade... Last semester, was a 69. Okay, and a little frowning face. All right, so um, we're going to be practicing this all week. You're going to do great with it. Um, it's probably going to be easier than you anticipate. Um, if you have multiplication, use the inverse operation of division. Division, you use multiplication. If you're given addition, you're going to use subtraction. If you have subtraction, you're going to use addition. So um, good luck with this.